More than 1,000 Balkan militants are currently fighting in Takfiri terrorist groups. They depart without saying goodbye to their families. Many of them will never come back home. In the early 1990s, during the great conflicts following the dissolution of Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, Saudi Arabia started to enter the Balkans from the front door. The whole operation was conducted under the auspices of the High Committee of Saudi Arabia. Many humanitarian organizations were opened to finance radical groups. Many Islamic communities became dependent on Saudi Arabia's money. Many so-called Mujahideen arrived in the Balkans, especially in Bosnia and Herzegovina, helped by the humanitarian organizations financed by Saudi Arabia. Today, some of these Saudi humanitarian organizations are closed, yet the fact still remains that they played a big role in the radicalization of the whole region and that most of today's Takfiri terrorists had training at centers financed by Saudi Arabia. They are doing those uh, uh, sins uh, and uh, evils uh, uh, in the name of God, but Bismillah means by the name of God. By the name of God I am eating, by the name of God I am living. Not in the name of God. Who am I to make something, to do something in the name of God? But by the name of God it is remembering me remembering me that I have to serve God. And serving God is not killing his creations. They leave brimming with hope for a better life. Yet thanks to that hope, a big business is thriving. A business that deals with human souls. Shkaku financiar që shkojnë, ajo është, ajo egziston, sepse në bas të intervistimeve të disa pjesmarëzë të cilët jënë këthy, Jan deklaru se kanë shku për qashtet të pagesis. Por, është interesant, ata jenë këthy të dëshpruar sepse nuk i kanë gjithë ato pagesa. Ja qak veru jem da ti madi ljudi, da oni koji šalju na ratište zapravo nemaju ni nameru da ih vraćaju ovamo. Ja mislim da ako ne poginu na ratištima od neprijateljske strane, poginu će od metka onog koji ih je poslao tamo. Mislim da uopšte ti koji ih šalju, koji ih spremaju za takva ratišta Sirije u ovom slučaju, ali sigurno i za mnoga buduća ratišta, nemaju uopšte nameru da plaćaju tim mladim ljudima. Kačanik is a small town near the Kosovo-Macedonian border. Today, the town has become the hotbed of Takfiri terrorists in the Balkans. Out of the total population of 30,000, 24 are fighting shoulder to shoulder with other terrorists in Syria. Jan pjesmars në në këtë konflikt. Oni su zapravo samo topovsko meso i oni su zapravo na neki način radi se o jednoj vrlo mimikriranoj i vrlo perfidnoj trgovini ljudima i ljudskim ljudskim životima. Oni koji se vrate imaju zadatak da dalje šire misiju, da dalje šire ideju i da budu neka vrsta sada trenera kako to izgleda odnosno da sada te druge mlade nove ljude obučavaju za ne znam, ratna dejstva ili kako god to već izgledalo kako to već izgleda na ratištima tako da se zaista ja mislim niko ne vraća slučajno da on ima zadatak i tekakav zadatak i žene i muškarci nažalost in early August 2015, Macedonian police arrested 10 Macedonian citizens on suspicion of transporting 130 Macedonians to fight in Syria as Takfiri terrorists. It's relatively cheap to buy a soul today on the black market of, in Macedonia and to, to send this soul to, to uh, extremely horrible uh, places such as uh, the, the, the war zones that are 
uh, in Syria and, and Iraq and uh, the, 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 the atrocities that have been uh, committed by the ISIS. They, 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 they uh, uh, went for, for money. It is business. Some uh, agencies you have who are uh, uh, trying to get uh, uh, unemployers uh, in that business. This is the story of business, story of uh, oil business uh, particularly. So, so we have to recognize what is the, what is the target, what, what uh, they, uh, they aim to do something uh, for their money. Uh, uh, and uh, we are here in Balkans. We are uh, mostly unemployed and they are using that situation by using the mostly essential uh, thing in our hearts, the religion. Money is just one of the reasons. The second one is intense indoctrination. Many young people are being brainwashed into fighting in Syria as a religious obligation. People are much more easily to be, to be manipulated, to be brainwashed. I read just uh, yesterday, uh, I read in the press, a letter of, a, of, of an Albanian um, guy who has sent it from and some some SMS I don't remember exactly to his girlfriend uh, showing that I love you but I love more Janet so he went to Syria to find and and it was just a love for Janet so it's which is so even from the text you find that these people are somehow brainwashed somehow that they will fight there they go to Janet and and then they will find a better life I don't think it's a question of uh, paying and of fighters who are going by money. I think it's more ideological. And I'll give you one of these guys who lost his life and his children and his mother is in that country. He sold his apartment here in Tirana and he went by his money. So I don't think it's a matter of paying. During the rule of the communist dictator Enver Hoxha, Albania was the only atheist country in the world, a country where religion was forbidden. Now, after 25 years, things have changed. Today, many young Albanians are fighting as Takfiri terrorists. The Albanian public was shocked when the media revealed Albanian citizens had been killed in the Syrian conflict. There is many explanations why Albanians are uh, become so radical. One of the explanations, uh, most of the Albanians, they were hardliner communists. So they were poisoned by, uh, let's say, by uh, left-wing ideology of communism and Bolsheviks, ba basically. They, Albania was under the influence of Soviet Union. And uh, also our Albanians in Kosovo, you see the, see the older leader of Albanians in Kosovo, and then you will find out that all of them were members of Communist Party. So uh, it is, uh, uh, let's say, from the left, if you are in one ankle, if you are left winger, and overnight you easily you can become right winger. So it's ideology, both of uh, on left and right side. It's just question and issue of ideology. It is simple. Their uh, unique uh, uh, goal and targets is a great Ar Albania idea. Uh, the Albanian nationalism uh, and the Albanian identity has been constructed during the end of 19th century not on the base of religion because Albanians have been of three religions are Muslims, uh, Orthodox and, and Catholics but uh, at that, uh, that's why at that time this, those who we called uh, our Renaissance, men of Renaissance uh, used this slogan the religion of the Albanians is Albanity The Albanian government passed a law that treats departing and fighting as a takfiri terrorists 
as an act of terrorism. The first results were promising. The number of Albanians fighting in Takfiri terrorist groups started to decline. We have uh, changed the criminal code, so now it's a terrorist act to go and fight a war uh, when Albania has not started a war. At this moment, more than 250 Kosovo Albanians are fighting in Takfiri groups. This is a great number compared to Kosovo's current population number. Some of the former UCK commanders who failed to adapt after the end of the NATO's intervention in Kosovo in 1999 are fighting in Syria today. So training camps is everywhere. Whenever they can go, like they, they open, for example, in Kosovo, in Bosnia, hunter society. Uh, and in Bosnia now there is uh, like 20, 30,000 uh, hunters, <laughs> hunters, uh, Muslim hunters. And what they are hunting, <laughs> what they are doing in the forest with the weapons, nobody cannot control. Lavdrim Muhajeri is the most notorious Kosovo extremist. Before joining Takfiri terrorists, he worked in Bonstil, the American base in Kosovo, while in 2010 he worked in NATO camps in Afghanistan. The warm of suspicion remains. How was it possible that NATO structures in Kosovo failed to classify him as a grave security threat for such a long time? And of course, uh, a, a specific target, very important target for the, for the militants is uh, the security sector. And uh, that's where they, they try to uh, either seduce, uh, indoctrinate or even threaten individuals who work in that, that kind of sensitive uh, facilities such as Bonstil uh, uh, military base in, in Kosovo and, and, and other places in the world. Uh, not every one of them is actually uh, indoctrinated. Some of them may have been uh, uh, threatened, blackmailed, or just uh, corrupted. Uh, they would do anything for any other force. Albanian jihadi with Kosovo, uh, Albanians from Kosovo jihadi and Albanians from Macedonia jihadi, they have been in, in a squad in Syria for a small period of time. All Albanians were together, they were fighting together. And uh, at least the, the, the character I have interviewed said to me that uh, this squad was first uh, led by Nimet Demoli, which was from Macedonia actually. And then uh, the leader was Lavdrim Ojeri, is a, a known jihadist now because a lot of news has came in Kosovo for him. Sometimes he was killed. He tried to kill some, some, some teenager there just to make a big show. Can you imagine that Christians did, do, did this to, to Muslims? It will be World War III. But now we have a situation that Al-Qaeda, ISIL and others, they are doing what they want. And we don't stop them. I ask openly until when? When someone will say to them in the face, now is enough. Metodi Hajiyanev was the first commander of the Macedonian military in Iraq. Under his command, no Macedonian commandos were killed on the Iraqi battlefield. Today, Metodi Hajiyanev serves as a military attaché of Macedonia in the USA. He still has information on the military organization and strength of Takfiri terrorist groups. Not all of them are trained at the same level. There are people that go over there and that they that they die recklessly. But uh, then there are people that are at middle level, they have uh, gained some experience during the conflict over there. And there are very experienced people inside uh, these groups, but still there is no relevant research that will show. And I doubt that those people are just uh, religiously motivated over there. The Balkan route, used by Balkan extremists on their way to the Middle East, goes through Macedonia, a small country crisscrossed by the most important Balkan roads. Macedonia has always uh, uh, looked like a sort of Casablanca. And uh, it's a crossroad for quite a few uh, uh, 
services, secret or um, uh, political or security services and so on. And uh, that's not surprising. What surprises me and shocks me a lot is that the government actually doesn't have a real strategy and policy. The Macedonian public is shocked by the fact that so far 15 Macedonian Albanians have been killed on Takfiri's mission. One is too many. 15 is already 15 times too many. Uh, it, is, it is shocking to see how the Macedonian society has uh, grown into such division and into such uh, uh, instability so it can give young people a way for a, a real bloody uh, war uh, which, is, which is going on uh, uh, right now uh, in the world, and especially in the Middle East. Uh, again, one is too many not to speak about 15. Ba Balkan route, which, which start from Croatia all the way south to, to uh, Macedonia, is used by jihadists as safe house. Most of the jihadists uh, traveling from the west, they came in our region, they, if necessary, they change their identities because it, it's very easy in Bosnia and Macedonia to marry the local woman and then during the marriage procedure you take the surname of the woman. So you change entirely your identity and also this safe house is used also for fundraising and helping all others passing through our region, coming to uh, Turkey and from Turkey they, they go on foot to, to Syria and other, other places. In 2012, on Monday Thursday, three days before the greatest Christian holiday, Easter, five young men were killed near Skopje. The Macedonian police accused the local Wahhabi groups as the perpetrators of the massacre. Six radical terrorists were arrested, charged and sentenced for this act of terror. The arrests and the outcome of the court procedure triggered big protests in Skopje. They resulted in unrests and clashes between the demonstrators and the Macedonian police. At these violent and radical protests, flags of Saudi Arabia and of Takfiri terrorists were waving. These people understand pretty much these challenges, these vacuums. They offer them a help, they connect with them, they talk with them. First they start and they approach them, usually by online, or and then they go one-to-one, -one, like a mentorship. So they guide them, they lead them, indoctrinate them, and then radicalize them. After doing that, they are ready and they are uh, planted bomb inside the, the society. Fahrudin Radoncic served as Minister of Security in the government of Bosnia and Herzegovina. During his tenure as minister, Bosnia and Herzegovina became the first Balkan country to criminalize fighting for Takfiri terrorist military formations. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a partner when partner is in question of our security. The first in the region to the law about the prohibition of war in paramilitary and parapolitical organizations, which coincided with the arrival of one part of the people in Syria. The security agencies in Bosnia and Herzegovina are the first to be in the region tim evidencijama oko 160 lica u ovom momentu ratuju u Siriji, a poginulo je 31 lice na ratištu u Siriji. Međutim, Francusko ministarstvo inostranih poslova i bezbjednostne agencije Austrije, Njemačke i Francuske imaju podatke da je 357 lica iz Bosne i Hercegovine na ratištu u Siriji i da ih je poginulo negdje oko 70 lica. From Bosnia and Herzegovina, only 80 Takfiri terrorists are fighting for Daesh. The rest are members of the Al-Nusra Front terrorist group. This issue has created deep divisions among Muslims in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia and Herzegovina Jedan je karakterističan primjer i možda na sreću jedini primjer u Evropi. 
da je državna vlast pomagala dolazak muđehedina, da je državna vlast davala njima lažne isprave, pasoše, lične karte, da im je državna vlast davala državljanstvo. Ti su muđehedini iskoristili Bosnu i Hercegovinu kao jedan vojno-edukativni centar da bi svoja vojnička znanja koja su ovdje stekli, a bilo ih je mnogo iz Egipta i drugih zemalja, otišli u El Kaidu i tamo vršili edukaciju drugih ljudi. U frontu Al Nusra je vođa bosansko-hercegovačkih vehabija Nusret Imamović. Ono što je karakterično za njega jeste da su Amerikanci objavili da on predstavlja bezbjednostnu prijetnju za nacionalne interese Sjedinjenih američkih država, ali ne vidimo ni jednu drugu bezbjednostnu mjeru koju bi poduzele bilo koje zapadne službe, pa ni Bosne i Hercegovine. The former minister of security Fahrudin Radončić blames all the Bosnian administrations for helping several thousands alleged mujahedins become Bosnian citizens. Some of them are fighting in Syria now. Više hiljada individualnih objekata, kuća, vikendica, su državljani Bosne i Hercegovine prodali ljudima afroazijskog porijekla. It's very necessary to make a distinction between Muslims and Muslim identity, feeling Muslim identity as part of your identity, and living in a secular state, and those who are more religious, maybe more Wahhabist or more fundamentalist, who if If you don't make the, the, the differentiation, but you put them together with the propaganda that the Muslim world is a threat, then it, comes, it, it becomes a problem in my view. Little by little, these processes escalated and started to spiral out of control. With the benefit of hindsight, it's easy now to see that it was a well-organized scenario from the very beginning. First, uh, Balkan jihadist, his name is Samir al-Bosnavi, you can imagine Samir al-Bosnavi, who actually uh, commit suicide attacks in Chechenia in 1994. So, that, that is nonsense. 1994, it, it was a bloody civil war in Bosnia. So, instead to fight for their own people, he went for jihad in Chechenia. And he died there. So for, for all of us, this is something out of mind. Many, a lot of youngster kids, age of six to age of, uh, uh, from age of six to age of 12, they were present and trained in Mujahedin camps. So what we, what is, what's happened to these kids? Where these kids are today? Today they are not kids, they are youngsters. They are 21, 22, 23 uh, years old. So where these kids are? In Western Europe, in Syria, in Macedonia, where they are? Na terenu se dešavaju čudne stvari. Dakle, vi ste imali u jednom trenutku žestok sukob islamske države protiv fronta Al-Nusre, protiv Al-Qaide. Dakle, jedna od vojnih jedinica kojim je komandovao uticajni vehabija Bajro i Kanović iz Hadžića je, kada je bila opkoljena, prišla jedinici islamske države. Sada to izaziva duboke podjele u bosansko-hercegovačkom društvu. Duboke podjele na Al-Qaidu i na islamsku državu. To istovremeno generiše antizapadno raspoloženje, izrazito antizapadno raspoloženje. In March 2013, a large-scale operation was conducted by the Albanian Ministry of Internal Affairs. It resulted in the arrest of seven high-ranking people responsible for sending Albanian militants to fight for Takfiri terrorists. In this operation, the most famous Wahhabist leaders in Albania were arrested. The police made this big operation. The Abdurah Imbala and Gensi Visa were two imams, but they were like uh, the Muslim community, the, the official Muslim community don't knew them. They were like making preaches in uh, uh, unlegalized mosques because the community don't want, uh, didn't have uh, influence in those mosques. And we, we start understanding that there were like two mosques in Tirana and some others uh, we are talking about five mosques 
in, in the whole country, was make this kind of propaganda. So they made open calls for uh, their, um, let's say, their, their believers to go there and to, and to fight because um, they were saying that uh, this is good for a Muslim, this is a duty for a Muslim, and you, you, uh, you should go there. And if you are killed for a good cause, like jihad is, according to them, then you'll go to, to the paradise and things like this. After we changed the legislation, after we uh, changed the criminal code, after we started the investigation on the networks which organized and recruit these citizens, uh, and after we organized the larger, larger counter-terrorist unit in the Balkans within police, uh, now we have zero departur departures. So zero citizens, Albanian citizens, going in Syria. Seventeen citizens of the Republic of Albania have been killed in Syria so far. The last one was killed because uh, he wanted to leave uh, the war. So we wanted to come back home and he was killed by ISIS. So th this is a positive sign that if the first one was were killed in the war, this one was killed by ISIS because he wanted to come back and leave the war. All the Balkan states underwent a painful process of transition after the collapse of communism. The countries dissolved, the families faced financial problems, and the faith in the religious communities was lost. This created a room for many messiahs to brainwash the people. So I think even the education is it's a, it's a big problem and this education of course is linked with the fact that these elites have polarized society, they are sending their kids and, and, uh, abroad in the west to study, they don't care for the, for, the, for the entire population to have better schools, good schools, even as far as religion is concerned. I think that so that even their religion life needs to be evaluated to have to make, to be more more for love and for 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 loving each other and not for 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 fighting each other at least 26 children from albania whose parents fought or died as takfiri militants are currently in syria there's a slim chance that these children return to albania safe and sound their fate today is highly uncertain the main problem for me is that a lot of children are there and we don't know what it's happening to them. Oh uh, uh, I said uh, uh, it is like 26 minors who went there with their families, but uh, uh, their fathers or some of their fathers are now killed. So just the mother and the children are now in Syria, left totally alone. We are working with the families. We know the phenomenon of uh, uh, family departure uh, to go in Syria. Uh, so we are working with uh, their uh, family members which are here to make it possible for them to come back. As well as we are working with the partners to identify them and make them come back here. It's difficult to, to, to have connection with them because they don't use uh, phones. They use Twitter, but they don't want to talk. They are afraid. And as much as I know, the children was like uh, putting in some school during the day and uh, go to the mother in the night. But they, their future is totally unsecure, and that's the problem. And nobody can help them. Before the crisis in Syria began, the Balkan media published that some of the Takfiri militants fighting against the legitimate rule of Bashar al-Assad had been trained in Kosovo. The same training camps in Kosovo where in 1998 and 1999 the Uceka militants had trained have been used for that purpose. Recently we got information from Iraq that uh, several Albanians from Kosovo that they commit suicide action in Baghdad. So what that means? 
it, it is a, a game of uh, figures. It doesn't matter. 15 from uh, Macedonia, 20 from uh, or 100 from Serbia, 20 from Montenegro. It's a, a game of, of figures. Uh, the, es essentially, we, have, we are talking about consequence, but nobody doesn't talk about essence. Essence means that there is big engine in Kosovo and in Albania and Montenegro and, and uh, Macedonia and Serbia as well, which produce today one, two, three, four, ten, twenty, uh, a couple hundreds, but tomorrow couple thousands and couple hundred thousands of jihadists ready to go and fight and die. But don't forget, our civilization, we do have more sophisticated weapons, aircraft carriers, rockets, whatever, drones, satellites. But most sophisticated weapons on Earth is a human with explosive on self. In September 2014, Kosovo police arrested the chief imam of the Great Mosque in Pristina, Shevket Krasnici. There was a held suspicion that he was involved in sending Kosovo militants to become takfiri terrorists. Shevchet Krastici is a part of the Bashkirti Islam, a professor in the Ligje Rus, in the Faculty of Studies of Islam. Maher has been engaged in the Ligje Rus in the Gjamin e Mave. But after the arrest, after the arrest of the Bashkirti Islam, he has been engaged in the engagement. Unfortunately, many mosques in Sanjak, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and in Macedonia became venues for criminal activities and safe havens for many outlaws. Ono što moje iskustvo i ono što ja pratim u Srbiji jeste da su kriminal i čitava ova priča odlaska na na ratišta van ovih naših teritorija su definitivno rođena braće ili rođene sestre. We need to create a list of radical imams, we need to create a list of radical islamists that they are actually danger for our society, that they are bringing uh, in our society, that they are, uh, they are bringing worriness, they are bring, bringing uh, all this poisoned idea, they are actually uh, vice spreading ideology of hate. And as I said, it's very time to say stop. Tutunset's mosque is located in the very center of Old Skopje. In early August 2015, the imam of this mosque was arrested in Operation Cell on suspicion of being involved in recruiting, organizing and sending takfiri terrorists from Macedonia to Syria. The fact that for several years Tutunset's mosque was out of control of the Islamic religious community of Macedonia is very interesting. These were the same problems the Islamic communities in Sanjak, Bosnia and Albania had faced. Moramo se pozabaviti šta je do toga dovelo. Dovela je nepravda, međunacionalna nepravda, ekonomska nepravda, socijalna nepravda, nepravda prema islamu i muslimanima. Danas imate vehabijske džamije koje su pod kontrolom Saudijske Arabije, mislim na džamiju kralja Fahda. I takve džamije su danas izvor neviđenog radikalizma i one su podrška tom odlastima u Siriju. On the 10th of May 2015, a large terrorist and criminal group consisting of Macedonian, Kosovan and Albanian citizens was scattered in Kumanovo, the second largest city in Macedonia. They threatened to start an armed conflict in Macedonia. Ten of the terrorists were killed by Macedonian police. The investigation revealed that several of them had already fought in Syria. A few years earlier, Serbian police had conducted a similar operation in Sanjak. To je tipično za ove posleratne situacije, ne samo ovde, nego svuda, da ovi bivši ratnici, ako se nisu snašli u miru, oni sanjaju da nastave taj rat na neki način. To znači razbijanje islamske zajednice, na čim pukotinama nastaju nekontrolisane grupe, koje regrutuju koga hoće, zašto hoće. Vi danas ovdje imate suprotno zakonu, registrovano nekoliko NGO, koje se bave isključivo vjerskom 
ovaj ulogom? Koja je po zakonu zabranjena? First of all, the, the, the Balkan countries, the Balkan states didn't uh, really work in the area of prevention. Uh, Balkan governments are known for uh, trying to uh, face uh, uh, consequences rather than to, uh, rather than to, to prevent uh, um, unwanted or, uh, or horrific uh, events. And uh, they can easily do that, but they simply don't. The political culture is such, uh, the, the corruptive practices and politics are such that uh, uh, brought these uh, societies to the brinks of, of, uh, of such crises as we, as we witness nowadays. And I, I believe it, it will even get worse. Uh, the, uh, five to ten years uh, prison uh, imprisonment for those who, who return from the uh, from the uh, war fields uh, is not a proper measure. Uh, we have seen that uh, in the in the Balkan after the Balkan wars, the the demobilization, uh, disarmament, and reintegration process uh, didn't really go so well. The DDR uh, uh, the process uh, usually would go uh, uh, until the second D, but never got to the R, to the reintegration. The regular Islamic communities face serious challenges. In May 2015, the disgruntled imams took over the control of the Islamic religious community in Macedonia using the threat of arms. The same unrest had happened in Serbia. It is not easy to tell what is behind that – crime, secret services, brainwashing or misuse of faith. Nisu, da kažemo, samo muslimani ciljna grupa. Postoji jedan broj, kada je Srbije u pitanju, i mladih Srba koji su navodno konvertiti, oni uzmu prosto neko muslimansko ime, posećuju džamije, osnivaju meždjide. Međutim, iza toga zaista ne stoji ništa osim, da kažemo, ozbiljnih kriminalnih radnji. Ako zagrebete po njihovim biografijama i ako u kontaktima možda sa bezbednostnim strukturama vidjet ćete odreda su to ljudi sa ozbiljnim kriminalnim dosijejima. Prateći kretanja tih ljudi vi možete da pratite ozbiljne tokove trgovine narkoticima, oružijim i ljudima. Kad neko otvara ilegalnu vjersku zajednicu po raznim podrumima, to znači da je to izmaklo kontroli. Da li će on tamo da uči nekoga da bude derviš ili će da ga regrutuje za Siriju ili za Afganistan, to više niko ne zna. E to je, ovo su vam posljedice razbijanja Islamske zajednice 2007. godine. They are disconnected of God. They don't have a book. They don't have any religion. They have just to make people disconnected from God and to make some money doing that uh, mainly job. Mainly job is to disconnect us from God and to have some money. They are doing that. This, this is the mission of that. I to je zaista ozbiljan kriminal koji pretpostavljam donosi stravično velike količine novca i zapravo ja mislim da i za ratova u Siriju, Iraku, ne stoji ništa drugo nego najozbiljnije međunarodne kriminalne grupe. Ja sam na to ukazivo i to je za mene pakistansko-afganistanski sindrom. U Pakistanu i Afganistanu ne postoji jedinstvena islamska zajednica, nego postoji jedna haotična sloboda u organiziranju islamskih zajednica. I onda imate po raznim podrumima, po raznim nastanak raznih škola, grupa, sekti, šta god, koje rade šta god ko hoće. I onda kad oni izvedu jednu generaciju, to su pokretne bombe. At the 2015 UN General Assembly, the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama, referred to the Balkans region as a possible hotbed for the formation of the so-called Islamic Caliphate in Europe. Bosnia and Herzegovina is the most important segment of that project. That Caliphate is not a small security question. The fact that the President of him or the President of the United States sekretar Sjedinja američkih država, najbolje kazuje kako se u pitanju globalna ambicija da ISIL postane svjetska velesila. Mislim da u skladu s tim diagnozama najodgovorniji da se problem ISIL-a riješi su najjače vojne sile svijeta. 
one su mu i dale dovoljno vremena da se on teritorijalno pozicionira i oni su najodgovornije sada da ga teritorijalno pobrišu i da dozvole da planeta Zemlja živi u jednom mirom okruženju. Već sama ekspertiza municije upotrebljene u napadu na redakciju Šarlije Ebdoa pokazala je oznaku IK-85. Proizvedena je, vi ima tamo i drugi IK-75, to znači Igman Konjic proizvodi 75. ili 85. godine. The UN report, official report, stated Bosnia as a second country in the world that has connections with Al-Qaeda, fifth group's humanitarian organization from Bosnia were recognized in the UN official report. Many experts agree that for a long time Bosnia and Herzegovina has been safe haven for many of the world terrorists, where they have had their own training camps. Moreover, El Mujahid has been used as a base for the recruitment of many of today's leaders among the Takfiri terrorists and the Al Nusra front. Ako uzmijete vrijeme, jedan period od 90. do 2001. godine do napada na Sjedinjene američke države, vi ćete vidjeti da je najjača teroristička infrastruktura, njena komandna, logistička i politička podrška u stvari bila u Bosni i Hercegovini. Da je ono što mi zove Modrej Del Mujahedin poslužilo dakle i da su iz njega nastajali i frontal Nusra koji danas kojim danas komanduje šejh Mohamed Ževlani u ime Al-Qaide i onome što zovemo islamska država Halifat, Hilafet ili Islamic State Irak Levanta čime upravlja Ebu Bekar el Bagdadi da su sve nastale iz toga. Vahabizam spreads across the Balkans like a spider web. It is slowly starting to infuse anti-Western sentiments among Muslim believers. The petrodollars coming from Saudi Arabia play a key factor in this regard. These charity foundations came into the country. A lot of them uh, result as resulted later what has links with Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations. But they start paying money for the poor and they start uh, giving scholarship for their children to go to the, to the Arab, Arabian countries and to study there. Uh, they were like, they had more influence in the poor areas, like Bulciza is in the north of the city. Uh, Dragostunia is a small town in Libraj. Libraj is between Elbasan and Pogradec. Uh, we have some other uh, groups here in, in, in the suburb of Tirana. So uh, these uh, cells, these cells remain like this, uh, like uh, sleeping cells for a lot of years. And it resulted to me that uh, from these cells are uh, most of the part of the persons who went to Syria. The Wahhabi and radical Islam is become passion, uh, fashion and passion among the youth. Um, among the, our youth. The centers of, center, centers of radicalizations are not in Southeast Europe. I will mention just one. One of the biggest centers of Wahhabi, of Balkan Wahhabi, is in Vienna, in Austria. So Austrian uh, officers and governments tolerate them. With a new generation of Balkan Muslim clerics increasingly being educated in places such as Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and hundreds of millions of dollars being invested by Middle Eastern donors to build Islamic schools and madrasas in the Balkans, the distinction between the more moderate form of Islam, traditionally practiced in Southeastern Europe, and the more extreme and violent forms practiced further to the East, is becoming less apparent. Oni imaju snažnu financijsku podršku i Katara koji se smatra marčom vehabizma, imaju snažnu i medijsku, obavještajnu, propagandnu podršku. Katar i Turska su u stvari najveća podrška islamskoj državi. 
a Saudijska Arabija i Ujedinjeni Arabski Emirati podržavaju Al-Qaidu. That's the main issue, actually. Who is giving money for that? And why Macedonia as a state, or Serbia, or Montenegro, uh, whatever, why we don't take any measure to stop this? Because with no money, no terrorism. We allowed Saudi government and Saudi uh, NGOs to build up mosques on our territory, and Saudi Arabia does not allow any Christians to build up any Christian uh, monument, any Christian uh, building on the soil of Saudi Arabia. So it's uh, our fault why we allowed them. It's fault of our secret services and our state not recognize that these guys, these organizations are threat. And from the moment when they recognize this is a threat, they are obliged to take, undertake some kind of the measure and countermeasure. Even the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which lasted from 1992 to 1995, didn't receive great support from the Muslim population of Albania, Kosovo and Macedonia. Just as the war in Kosovo in 1999 did not have the support of Bosnian Muslims. The mass departure of Muslim population from these countries to fight in Syria demonstrates that this is a case of a well-organized network with a lot of money at its disposal. The Islamic communities in the region are afraid to express public condemnation of these pseudo-religious communities that send young Muslims from the Balkans to fight or get killed in the Middle East. What we can do in this sense, how we can confront, how we can actually stop this. It is not easy and it's not nice that you understand one morning when you wake up that uh, son of your first neighbor went to, uh, to Syria or Iraq and uh, died there. And most importantly, what will happen if all these guys, these terrorists with their actually brainwashed minds, what will happen if they come back? What we can do as a society? They did not do any crimes. Now, recently, our government actually brought the law which uh, ban all those uh, 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 that they are willing to fight in, in, in Syria and, and elsewhere. But uh, how we can know that someone was in Syria? Only if the guy put on their Facebook some kind of the photos that he was there. What about numbers and numbers of the people that we don't know that they were there, they were highly trained, highly motivated and they come back to our society as instructors. So we, what we can expect in the future, what the Western Europe can expect uh, in the future. But the problem is the Western Europe don't have solution. The current situation in Syria has fueled the fear that most of the Takfiri terrorists shall return to their home countries. Jednog dana iz Sirije ovdje će biti ogromna bezbjednostna opasnost. Oni uvijek mogu ta znanja, te svoje radikalne veze iskoristiti za jednu vrstu destrukcije i u Bosni i Hercegovini i u Europi. Even if uh, they uh, come back willingly, voluntarily, serve a prison sentence of 5 to 10 years, uh, what after that? Uh, what do we expect for, from those individuals? Uh, uh, a so-called Rambo sy syndrome for the rest of their lives? A contamination uh, of neighborhoods and, and the, the, the micro environment where they, they live and work after that? Even if Albania or the other countries in the region have no domestic threats by terrorism, as we are able to export foreign fighters, the day they will come back as a threat here is maybe is not too far. Furthermore, we have now ISIL in uh, Syria, in, in Iraq. They are uh, every day they are posting some messages, they are posting some maps and in center of these maps uh, actually European caliphate is Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, Croatia and many other Bosnia, many other countries from this region. What th this message means to us? Whether, need, whether we need to accept this message very seriously? I said yes, because we have very wide terrorist infrastructure in the Balkan. We have these maps that they are, these guys are posting in, uh, in uh, ISIL websites, etc., etc. So they openly telling us, we are going to come to you, we are going to conquer you.
Today, all Balkan countries fear what will happen in the region when Takfiri terrorists start to come back to their homes. Is the Balkans sitting on a powder keg which is only a spark away from explosion? Will reason overcome uncertainty? Will the weapons lose its battle against the religion?